I'm going to use RAD Studio to build a multi-device application that will store data in Amazon Cloud. Before we can start with building the application, we need to configure the Amazon Simple Storage Service. Let's jump to a web browser. And in a web browser, first of all, I need to make sure that I have Amazon Web Services account created. I'm not going to go through the steps of creating the account right now. There is something called F Amazon Web Services free tier where you can create your account and for the first year you can try certain services for free. After you have created your Amazon Web Services account, you can log in into the management console and you have an access point to all different Amazon Web Services. We are going to specifically uh, go into the simple storage uh, service area and what we are going to do here, we want to create a bucket where we are going to store our Delphi, uh, our uh, data from our RAD Studio application. So buckets is a concept uh, from a simple storage service. This is how um, Amazon Simple Storage Service organizes its data. A user can have uh, up to 100 buckets, but within a bucket you can create uh, upload as much uh, data uh, as you like. We are going to give the name to the bucket. It has to be a lower case with no uh, spaces or any special characters. So Rat Studio Test 1 will be the name of our bucket. And I'm going to select US standard as a region uh, to create this bucket. This is very important to make sure this is a US standard and not other bucket. OK, click on Create and I have uh, created a new bucket. So before I can start putting data into this uh, bucket, I need to make sure I have proper access rights. For this, I want to jump into the another uh, Amazon Web Services service called uh, Identity and Access Management. And I want to create a dedicated user uh, that I'm going to grant uh, rights to access this new bucket. So I'm going to create a new user. I'm going to give it a name RAT Studio Test 1 User. And the option to generate access key is already checked. So when I click on Create, I have an opportunity, a uh, one time opportunity to either view the credentials uh, of my user or I can download a CSV a file uh, with those credentials. This is very important to use these credentials. I need to copy these credentials to, uh, to uh, in my case, notebook. So I want to open the right, the right thing here, All like this, and I'm going to put my credentials here. Okay, so that's uh, I'm going to need it uh, during the development uh, of my uh, application. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Now I have created a RAD Studio test user. Uh, when I click on this uh, user, uh, I see there are no uh, policies attached to this user. So this user does not have any rights right now. I'm going to open the inline policies option and click here to uh, generate a new uh, policy. So there is a useful policy generator option uh, so I can select it and I can uh, specify which policy I want to create. So which service? So this is going to be Amazon S3 service. What actions? All actions. And I need to specify the Amazon resource name of my uh, bucket. So I can jump to the documentation and in the documentation there is a information how to specify the my sample AWARN for my bucket. So I'm going to copy this uh, syntax and put it uh, in my Amazon resource name. But instead of example bucket, I'm going to specify my RAT Studio one. Uh, RAD Studio test one bucket. I can click on add statement and uh, go to the next step 
and uh, the policy is just a plain uh, JSON file, I can use a validate policy option to find out that my policy is valid and click on apply policy. So right now I have created a simple storage service bucket on Amazon Cloud and created user uh, with credentials that I have uh, secured and this user has just rights to uh, perform different operations of my newly created RAD Studio test one bucket. Now it's time to jump to RAD Studio to create an application to put and retrieve data from this bucket.